Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. My name is Braxton Kirsting. I am the applications expert in Kansas City, Missouri. Today we're gonna to be checking out the enhancements made to parts and features in SOLIDWORKS 2023. Here I have my handle grip and I want to represent my model name with a single line font so I can inscribe this on the surface. And previously we we needed so, uh, closed profiles for in order to use wrap or um, cut. And now in 2023, the wrap feature does support single line fonts with the scribe wrap type. So select my surface, we see that preview, we see the single line open contours. And once it's created, we can see we can select these edges. They are analytical edges, so we are able to uh, bring them into CAM software and program our machines uh, based off those edges. The next thing I want to add to my model here is a logo at the end of my handle grip. And I have a nice library feature already set up for this. Here's my DTV logo. Let's go and pin that in so it stays put. And when I drag this into my model, what you're going to see is the preview is not centered on the insertion point, so where my cursor is. And if I position my cursor where the preview is in empty space, it's gonna try and cut zero geometry, which, which isn't allowed. And in previous versions, we were not able to accept this. We had to fix it right here and now. In SOLIDWORKS 2023, we don't necessarily have to do that. We can go ahead, throw it in there, get into our typical modeling space and uh, we can come back and fix it up later. Now here if we look at the cut extrude within that library feature we do see that it, it is warning us about how the sketch does not intersect the model. I cannot cut any material and so uh, from here I can actually just edit that sketch. I'm just going to press Control A for select all uh, and I can also hold shift to click and drag to move the profiles together so that they don't kind of stretch at that point. Uh, we keep all the sketch relationships intact. And we can drop that in, which now it's centered in that handle grip and it's gonna be able to cut that material. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some grips here and I'm gonna use that Q key that was introduced in SOLIDWORKS 2022 to temporarily show the planes. And I'm gonna make my sketch on, here on plane one. I'm gonna use the ellipse tool and in SOLIDWORKS 2023, the ellipse tool does actually now have a property manager. We have the option to add construction lines similar to how we have construction lines in our rectangles. So now when I sketch this out, we have construction lines connecting the major and minor axes. So now we only have a single click to make those horizontal, for instance. Um, go ahead and add in a sketch relationship here. And we also have a single click to specify the overall length. Now I have a couple global variables set up. To, I'm gonna equate those to that so I can iterate through a couple designs um, fairly quickly. Go ahead and throw in Two more dimensions here to fully define my sketch. And now we're ready to extrude my profile. I'm going to unsnap this so I have more real estate. So we're just gonna do a boss extrude. I'm gonna go up three millimeters and I'm intentionally gonna turn off the merge result so that I can merge these as individual bodies. Now I'm gonna pattern this down the handle grip and I want some sort of stagger. So the first thing I'm gonna do is offset this uh, along an angle along this axis. And we'll just do that 15 degrees. I only need two total instances. And I wanna make sure I'm using the bodies option here. And now I need to move it down just, just slightly to create that staggered effect. And I'm gonna use the move copy bodies command. But in 2023, we can actually equate this to our global variables. So in this translate section, once I type in that equals symbol, uh, we get the functions, we get the global variables we can tie into. 
And since it is a stagger, I'm going to take my spacing and just divide it by two. And now, again, circular pattern. Go around our cylindrical face here. I'm going to do a total of 12 instances. Again, use our body selection to select the two pattern or two bodies uh, for my lips. That's looking pretty good. So now I have my first pass. We'll just take another linear pattern and draw this on down the line. Again, I can just use that cylindrical surface. It finds that center axis. So that's going to work here as well. And again, we're making sure we're using the bodies. Now we have a lot of bodies here. Instead of selecting each one individually, we can do a box selection. Uh, left to right is anything that's fully inside my selection box so that makes sure I don't don't select the handle grip itself and we see that start to populate that's looking pretty good but I also want to tie this into my global variable so I can iterate through a couple designs so the spacing we'll go ahead and use my spacing global variable and for my instances use the instance count And so by making those equations, we can utilize the equation manager. And if we have the automatically rebuild on, it makes it really easy to just key in new values. Once we press enter, we can see it updates. So that's looking pretty good. We can even maybe update the length. Okay, at this moment I've completed my part design. I have all the features that I want in it, but this is a pretty intricate part. There's a lot of detail going on in here. And for our, you know, our part detailing, that's great. But for large assembly design, this really goes against best practices. You know, we want to remove the detail that's really not necessary at the upper level. So that's going to include things like the text. Uh, certainly the scribe wrap and the library feature, but also these really small bodies. Let's go ahead and clean those up. And if you're not familiar, there is already a tool to help us with this. It's called D feature. You're going to find it in that tools dropdown. So with the D feature, we can find bodies. So I haven't merged these into a single body. Uh, so I can actually use the small body percentage and the display can update to make sure that I've set that at an appropriate level. So uh, that's hidden all those small bodies, so that's a, a good start. I don't have to select each one or do a, a large box selection. Now, if there's any sp particular features we know we want to keep, um, you know, the revolve, the fillets, those are really the details we know we need. Uh, we can select those outright. And then SOLIDWORKS is going to make a first pass to try and simplify the model. And it's done a pretty good job. It's figured out, you know, the, the library feature component, let's remove. But we can also incorporate additional items that we know we want to remove. So maybe we also want to clean up this hole at the end. And when we click Next again, it's going to pass again and remove the selected features. Now, this is where SOLIDWORKS 2023 differs. Uh, it's, this feature has been improved. We can now create a new configuration. This new configuration is actually added as a derived configuration. And we can see it's just a defeatured uh, feature in our feature manager. So we don't even have to dig through a bunch of um, suppressed features to, to understand what we're looking at. Looking at the configuration manager, we do see that derived configuration under our default, which is great because anything changing in the default configuration is going to flow down into our derived. So making additional design changes after the fact will still be incorporated. And we have a separate configuration we can reference independently in our assembly rather than having to keep track of maybe a separate part file. Uh, so it makes our uh, life cycle management a bit easier as well. So that concludes my video on enhancements made to parts and features in SOLIDWORKS 2023. Thank you all for joining me.